Don't try to move around. It'll feel better in just a few seconds. So we're here today uh, because we want to try to eliminate his back pain that he's had for many years and he wasn't able to get it treated in Canada. And honestly, in the United States, it's the same problem. Too many people have chronic back pain. Their doctor doesn't know how to fix it. And so they end up living with it, believing there's no cure. But there is a cure to pain. It's just a matter of doing the right treatment, okay? And the problem is the vast majority of spine doctors don't know how to cure back pain. Now, if your back pain happens to be coming from muscles, which is rare, then you can get physical therapy and they'll do a good job of reconditioning your muscles. If your back pain is coming from the facet joints, then a chiropractic will be very helpful. But when your back pain comes from a herniated disc, no chiropractic, no physical therapist, no interventionalist, no pain medication in the world works. The only thing that works is to surgerize the disc. What does that mean, surgerize the disc? It means to do surgery on the disc. And something specifically has to happen. Are you okay? What has to happen is you have to treat the source of pain in the disc. And that source of pain, shot, is quite literally the annular tear, lateral. So I'm asking my x-ray techs here to take a picture with the x-ray machine. Now, how do I know where to go with this surgery? I know where to go because I look at the x-ray that's being taken in real time during the surgery. And it's called fluoro, fluoroscopy. All right, so I'm a little higher than I wanna be. I'm gonna go ahead and move south. Sorry. South means towards the feet. <coughs> Are you comfortable? Yes? Good. I'm just giving you a little more numbing medicine a little south of where I was. So far, everything's going well. Um, the fluoro shot has clearly indicated to me that we need to reposition where we're, our entry point is. By the way, the AD is my initials. Uh, it's part of our, what's called the um, timeout. It's done on every surgery in the United States. It's supposed to be where the surgeon reviews the patient's um, consent form and the history and physical to make sure that we're doing surgery at the right place, on the right patient, on the right side, at the right level. And levels are important in spine, unlike knees, right? You only have one left knee. Is that our shot there? You guys should be a little bit further south. A little bit further south. All right. That's pretty good. Now, we're targeting L4-5, so right now we've got a WAG issue. Now, you can see there's a little bit of offset between L4 and L5. The L5 pedicles are lined up. The L4 pedicles are not. So before I go any further, I want to make sure that I'm very happy with the X-ray machine and the pictures I'm getting of the spine. So right now I'm not happy. And... We need a little bit of rotation, a little arc. I think this side needs to come up a little bit. That your side needs to go down. Let's get a shot there, and then we're gonna need to wag it. That's better, that's better. And actually, the wag, it could be a minimal wag because I'm looking at the pedicles of five and they look perfect. The only thing is maybe a little more arc. To, let's do a little bit more of the arcing, just another degree or two, and let's see what that does. That's better, that's perfect. Let's just um, leave it right where it is and we're ready to get started here. So what I did there is I repositioned the, the fluoro to make it a better picture of the spine that's more reliable and more accurate so that as I guide the needle to where I need to go, I know from the bony anatomy where I am. And everything I do from here going forward uses the bony anatomy, the anatomy of the spine, the bones, to make sure that I don't go somewhere I'm not supposed to, but also to take the right path to where I wanna go. So I'm coming from the side, and the muscles and everything feel supple, 
and I'm aiming for L45. Just let me know if it's uncomfortable for you, okay? Shot? It's a little lower than I want to be. So I'll redirect. Now, it's interesting, Shot. He has a, a very high iliac crest. Can anyone appreciate that? A very high iliac crest. You can actually see the shadow of the iliac crest at the L4 vertebral body about halfway up. There's a double shadow, one for each crest. And normally the iliac crest goes through the top of L5. This is going through the middle of L4. So his iliac crest is very high. And that's okay. Shot? Now we're at the facets. Our targeting looks really good. I'm just going to redirect a little bit. Shot? Shot? We have a question. Sure. Viewer from YouTube is wondering, Shot? is fluoroscopy the same as CT guided? No. Fluoroscopy and CT guided are different. Okay? Fluoroscopy and CT guided are not the same. Um, CT guided uses x-rays, just like fluoro does, Sean. but CT is, stands for computer tomography. Tomography is slicing, computer-assisted tomography, and uh, that's what CAT, CAT scan, really means, is computer-assisted tomography. It basically means taking slices of the per patient's body with x-rays, and then a computer um, basically is used to um, um, hold on, used to, uh, software uses a program or algorithm to basically reconstruct the images so that you can see what's in the body. I'm going to go a little more lateral. Do you feel anything back here? I'm good. Huh? I'm good. He's good. I want to go a little more lateral. Um, and he's got pretty large facet joint shot. And I want to make sure I get around him properly. Shot? He's doing fantastic. Everything's going well, by the way. We're just making our way to the bad disc. Shot? Okay. Are you comfortable? Shot? All right. So that's pretty good target. Again, where do you feel that, Shot? Down in your hip. All right. Shot. 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 Everybody's bony anatomy is a little bit different. Some people have larger bones, higher bones, wider bones. And what I have to do is get to the target area despite the differences you pulsing right guys yes, sir. shot despite the differences in the bony anatomy shot i'm right at the facet i'm just working my way around it shot And you can all see we're aiming right for L45. That's the bad disc. Shot. Yep. Let's get an AP. So we're right there. I'm happy with the bottom. I see the sacrum. I see the L5S1 disc. I see the L5 vertebral body. And we are now with the needle right at the foramen at L45. And I want to check the AP view to make sure I'm happy with where we are. Are you comfortable? Yes. All right, it's perfect, absolutely perfect positioning. You can see he's got a little bit of scoliosis there with those spinous processes. We're not here to do scoliosis surgery, and fixing his scoliosis will not make him better. Fixing his annular tear will, and that's what we're going to do. We're almost done. We're going to put you to sleep, okay? Get a shot. No, no, no. You gotta, you gotta reposition the floor before you do that. Can Other one. Fifteen minutes. I need a, I need a shot. All right, better. So we're right there. We're about to enter his painful disc. 
shot. Are you comfortable? He's not getting any pain meds, right? But but that's not pain. Is is he got any fentanyl? When? How long ago? But it should be gone by now, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I just don't. I want him to. I need to have a reliable test. Are you comfortable? How bad is that on a scale of one to ten? A nine? Guess what? We found your source of pain. It was that disc at L45, just like we thought from the MRI and based on your exam. Isn't that great news? No. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. So you're going to, when you wake up, that pain will be gone for the rest of your life as long as you don't, as long as you don't re-injure your back, okay? So I want you to count from 1 to 100 out loud. I want you to count in Canadian. <laughs> just kidding. You want to count in French? You can. Good. Keep going. All right. So beautiful. I was very happy when I saw that. I injected the discogram dye. We did an evocative discogram. If his L45 disc was not causing his back pain, he would not have felt pain. But because he felt pain, 9 out of 10, typical pain that he gets, he felt that pain and he arched his back. Yes, it hurts. So we know that disc, because that's the only thing I'm testing is the disc, and that's the 045 disc. If you look at the x-ray that was up there, you can see the dye is leaking out back along where the uh, needle was coming in. It's leaking out back into the epidural space. So there's a big tear there. It is a grade four tear, and this patient's pain is coming from that tear. So that's great news. That means when I'm done with the Duke laser disc repair, and I've repaired his annular tear that he will he will be pain free incredible this is the only surgery in the world that can take people's back and neck or thoracic pain away from a herniated disc it's um, targeted just to the annular tear which is the source of the pain and the only other surgery that works if it's done properly is a fusion there's no other surgery like a laminectomy doesn't work Microdiscectomy doesn't work. Foramenotomy doesn't work. They won't take back pain away. They won't take neck pain away. The only thing that works is fusion and this surgery. If you don't want a fusion, which nobody does, this is the surgery to get. Is he okay? Shot? All right, I'm going to give him, I'm going to go through the tear in a moment, in about one minute. And as I go through, it's going to be uncomfortable. That's where his pain's coming from. So we just be prepared for that. Let me know if you want me to wait. Uh, no, I would just use propofol. I don't mind if he moves a little bit. Are you comfortable? Shot. Yeah. So, huh? Oh, good. Perfect. As long as you're happy, his airway's secure, he's breathing well, we're perfect. All right, so you can see the dilator tip. Look up there, doctor. You see the tip of the dilator? It looks like a pencil. It's about to make contact with the back of his disc. So we're about entering the foramen right now. I'm underneath the exiting root shot, and I'm on the disc. That's pushing against the herniation right now. And it's a small herniation. But that's where the tear is, OK? So we're about to go in, and this will stimulate him a little bit. All right, so if he doesn't move, we're perfect. All right, so we're going to place the dilator transforaminal right now shot. And here we go. Yeah, perfect shot. Perfect, perfect. Couldn't be better. I like operating on Canadians. They make my job so easy. I'm just kidding. Everybody does. It's perfect. So this guy would have had nuts and bolts in his back to stop this pain, but you can't just put do a fusion. You have to clean the disc out and put a cage in. Just lay still. Everything's okay. You're doing great. Now, the other thing about our surgery is it's bl pretty much bloodless. You can see we only had a drop of blood. And, um, you know, fusions hurt. I don't mind him coughing a little bit, but we're, we're going to stimulate him. Shot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you need to do. Shot? 
Yeah, this is the uncomfortable part. We're holding. We're not doing anything. Just lay still. You're doing great. Uh, so you're going to do them titrating with a little propofol, or are you doing? All right. Get the floral out. Move south. Go ahead and pull the floral back. All right, folks. So we'll s we won't do anything stimulating for a moment until well, you tell me. But uh, I want to show everybody what we've got so far. Now, if we did traditional back surgery, he would need to have a an incision on his back. It's enough that would be this long, like that. You see that? That's a scissor. The surgeons that do spine surgery today in this day and age, they all make cuts in the middle. The pioneer of this technique of going from the side through the foramen was Dr. Parvis Cambin from Pittsburgh. He was the first one to describe this transfer endoscopic technique. The problem was he had lots of complications, many, many patients with nerve damage. We've had zero patients with nerve damage. And there's a reason. There's a way that I do the surgery that for those of you that are astute and understand the anatomy, you understand what I do different. All right, and I, I've been able to avoid any nerve damage as a result. So the disc will be repaired through a seven millimeter incision with basically a bloodless surgery. You guys doing okay? Yes. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and put our fluid adapter on. This is the suction line, it sucks. Whatever you need, doctor. Uh, All right. Yeah, I think we've got one more area of stimulation in about five minutes, six minutes, eight minutes. Yeah. And after that, all right, we're going under the scope. For those of you who have never seen this, we're literally going to go inside the disc and the end of this scope. You guys can see my finger, Sean? Can you see that? Yes, we can. You can see my fingers, right? I'm making the OK sign. So there's a source of light. There's also a camera rod lens system. And of course, irrigation to um, carry out the any blood particles. All right. So we are currently inside the L45 disc. And I'm bringing the laser in. And we'll be done in about 10 minutes, doctor. 10 minutes. Is my laser on? Yes. We're on 30? Yes. All right. There's part of the annular tear. You can see the degenerated disc is blue. It's stained blue with the dye that I use. And yeah, you just give it a second. The picture should get better. The laser is doing its job of vaporizing the tissue. And notice how there's no blood. The spinal disc is a relatively bloodless tissue. The only the outer part of the disc has a blood supply. The inner nucleus, propulsus, and the inner half of the annulus do not. So because there's no blood supply to the inside of the disc, there can be no pain fibers either. Um, because pain fibers require a blood supply. You okay over there? All right, so I'm gonna try to clean up the picture. It's not bad, actually. That's the annular tear right there, which I'm debriding. There's a piece of herniation. I'm gonna grab, try to get it out. All this is done, folks, with a seven millimeter incision. Smallest surgical incision in the world. I laugh at my colleague spine surgeons who say they do minimally invasive spine surgery. They don't do this. Their incisions are far bigger. They're literally four times larger. And they say they, they, they're doing minimally invasive. The problem is they don't know this technology even exists. I've tried teaching them, but they don't listen. So I'm not trying to boast or brag. I'm trying to teach you all why your spine surgeon doesn't do this surgery. He doesn't, he or she doesn't do it because A, they don't know it exists, or B, they know it exists, but they've never taken the time or spent the money and time to learn it. 
and they need to because this is the future of spine surgery for the world. Right here, you're watching it at Duke Laser Disc Repair. For those of you who are not sure what I'm talking about, it's been peer reviewed and published. It's uh, indexed in the National Library of Medicine and Surgical Neurology International. The surgery you're watching is special in that its purpose is to cure back pain and leg symptoms or leg pain, as well as neck pain, thoracic pain, arm pain. So any symptom due to a herniated disc, spinal stenosis, degenerated disc, bulging disc, slip disc, ruptured disc, any of those, annular tear, disc bulge, all can be treated with this surgery. So that's about 98% of spine problems right there, degenerative spine problems, can be cured with this surgery. It doesn't fix fractures of the spine, um, but pain from the back, pain in the neck, pain down the leg, pain down the arm, all fixed with the surgery if it's coming from a herniated disc. That's why it's important. That's why we need to get the word out. It's also very safe. You know, the complication rate for normal spine surgery is anywhere around 5 to 50%, depending on what type of surgery. But the surgery is done to treat pain, and the complication rates range from 5 to 50%, depending on who's doing the surgery and what they're doing. With this surgery you're watching right now, the complication rate is zero. We've had zero complications in 15 years, over 1,200 of these surgeries done. There is no other spine surgery in the world safer. There is no other spine surgery in the world that has a 0% complication rate. Now, could I have a complication today? Sure. This could be the first one. I don't expect it, but it could be. And I'm not just talking about surgical complication. I'm talking about anesthesia complication. As you can see, there's no blood loss. Literally just a drop of blood, unlike open back and neck surgery where there's lots of bleeding. It's very bloody. I know spine surgeons that will lose half of the patient's blood during surgery, doing laminectomies and fusions. I don't, but I know other surgeons that do, okay? So this surgery is relatively bloodless, bloodless surgery. So it's another advantage for the patient because you don't want to lose blood during surgery. Why am I getting a artifact? There's the tear right there. That's what we're here to fix. We've been working on it, but now I'm moving to the outside. See the artifact I'm getting? It's kind of like a blurriness. Do you think the lens is okay here? Yeah. I'm gonna take it out and wipe the lens. Go ahead and get a Raytech uh, Ray ready. Standby laser off. Let's wipe the lens, go. You have to be careful with these scopes. They, they bend. Oh, yeah, that's better. So there was just some schmutz. Uh, there's no problem with the lens system. And there's the end of the tear right there. Literally five minutes will be done. And this surgery will, will cure this man's back pain. How do I know? All right, there's no more pain med given, right? You're not giving him any more pain medicine. Uh, I did, I did give Dose of fentanyl. How much? 25, 50? Huh? I gave 50 more. 50 more. So how long till that's gone out of his system? An hour? Will it be gone in an hour? For sure. All right. So in one hour, oh, we're going to interview this patient in the recovery room, okay? And he won't have any pain medication on board at all. There would be no pain meds. He would have just had back surgery, and he's going to go home with his lovely wife, who I've had many conversations with about bees. How many people out there know there's a problem with bees worldwide? They're dying. We had a good conversation about it, and she seems she's she's a beekeeping expert. I trust her opinion. She thinks it's a combination of things that have weakened the bees' immune system. You know, dealing doing with pesticide use and change in diet and change in nutritional status. It's compromised the bee's immune system and it's, it's making them more susceptible to diseases that normally they would 
be able to fight off and win, but they're succumbing to those diseases. So I've heard lots of things in the news about why are the bees dying. It's, I've heard it's a fungus, I've heard it's viral, but you don't know, right? Until you ask somebody who really knows, and uh, she's an expert, so I trust her opinion. Um, and they're going to go back to Canada. I don't know when they leave, maybe tomorrow. But they flew from Canada just to have the Duke laser disc repair because it's not available anywhere in Canada. And they know people who have been cured of their pain from the surgery. I know lots of people who have been cured of their discogenic pain. So they're going to go back to that Canadian weather. I told them you ought to hang out a little bit, maybe try to catch a rocket launch here at near NASA because that's where we're located. We're located in Space Coast of Florida, right next to NASA. We see all the rocket launches, whether they're satellites or SpaceX or soon to be Blue Origin. We'll be testing their rocket soon. My understanding, Blue Origin wants to go to the moon, whereas SpaceX, I think, wants to go to Mars. So, I don't know if they're c competition or not. Is that competition? Anybody? One wants to go to Mars, the other one wants to go to the moon. Are they competing? Huh? I don't know. I don't know enough about it, to be honest with you. It seems like they would not be competitors because they want to go to different places, but they kind of are because they're both building rockets and rocket engines. So go figure. All right, so we're just about done. I need two minutes and we're done, doctor. Okay. So um, I'm just putting in the last few touches of debridement. This right here, the blue stuff is herniated disc and I'm zapping it away with the laser, breaking it up, vaporizing it in the little pieces. You can't even see the little pieces, but they cause the view to be a slightly cloudy. But notice there's no blood, right? This is basically bloodless surgery. Now, there's some veins right there in the epidural space, a little bit of fat, and that's really the end of the surgery right here. I just want to make sure we do a good job. Now, this area that I'm operating on, I've gotten rid of the source of pain by, by removing the herniated interposed nuclear material, but I'm also debriding the annulus so that it will heal properly. This patient's pain will be gone when they wake up. However, they will not be healed. And that's a very important distinction. Healing takes a year to fully heal this disc. And the reason for that, anybody know? Anybody know why the disc takes a full year to heal, whereas other tissues heal much quicker? It's avascular. Avascular has a poor blood supply. That is correct. So any tissue that has a poor blood supply is not going to heal well. So diabetics, right, they don't have a good blood supply. They don't heal well. Their skin heals much slower because the blood supply is so bad. Plus they have high sugar. So they got they have ischemic issues and they've got metabolic issues. But even a, a person with bad circulation in their leg, right, narrowed arteries from cholesterol disease, they don't heal well. And anybody with compromised blood flow, any tissue with compromised blood flow won't heal well, okay? So the disc is no different, it heals slowly. So that's why people have to take it easy after the surgery. They think, oh, the pain's gone, I'm back to normal. No, the pain's gone, but you are not back to normal. And you need to give that disc a full year to heal. So let's see if we can see his nerve. Remember, this, this patient's nerves were not compromised. They were not being crushed or pushed on. Let me get this last piece right here. Now, over time, it would get worse for him if he didn't get this fixed. So he would start getting leg symptoms. But by fixing the disc now, it should heal properly. He shouldn't have any leg symptoms. We're done. Look how nice and simple that was. No big incision like the last surgery we did today. Scope off. 
there's no uh, bleeding, no muscle exposure, no spine exposure, no bone taken out of the spine. Basically, it's a beautiful surgery, the most elegant spine surgery done through the neural foramen. And uh, we're going to show you just in a minute. Luis is going to put some pressure here. No, put some pressure here. No, 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 let go of that. Okay, you got the So I like to put pressure on the muscle for about three minutes to stop any bleeding. Can you see this, Sean? Yes, we can. All right, so this was inside the disc. So we went right into where the tear is, and we're inside the disc, and I brought my scope and light and everything down there, and basically we're operating right at the end here with the laser and my tools, okay? This is called the tubular retractor. It's seven millimeters wide. That's why the incision is so small. This is suction, and then we have an irrigation line, and I'm gonna show you the incision so you can see just how small it was. You can wake him up, doctor, in case you didn't know. So, thank you. Uh, you have a, an endoscope here, I'll show you. You guys still see this, Sean? So the yes. This is a special tool. You won't find this in 99% of the hospitals in the United States don't have this. They have endoscopes, but they don't have this spine endoscope. And um, it's unfortunate because you need this setup to, to be able to do this kind of surgery. So we have a high definition camera, which is attached to the scope. Okay. That's this guy. And then you have the scope itself with irrigation. All right, and then you have a light source here, which we've turned off. So there you have it. The endoscopic rig explained, right? Yeah. Here it comes, okay, good. And just so you know, why do, why do hospitals not have it? This is $12,000, just this. I mean, the rest of the stuff is even more expensive. But this scope is 12 grand, and we have lots of them because you need it, several of them in case it falls on the ground or breaks, stops working. So the investment in the, into equipment is massive to do minimally invasive spine surgery like we're doing. So a lot of hospitals don't have the budget. I don't know if you saw in the news this week, but there are 900 hospitals in the United States on the verge of going bankrupt, 900 that are gonna close, 900. Uh, that's one in four hospitals. That's 25% of the hospitals in the United States are on the verge of financial collapse because of, well, I'll tell you why. It's really due to chronic underpayment by insurance companies not paying the hospitals enough money. And then on top of that, you add, you know, the fact that there's COVID, so the reduced number of procedures they're treating. It doesn't matter that they're doing COVID treatments. They're not making enough money. So they're on the verge of bankruptcy. What does that mean for people? It's horrible. Because if you have an emergency, there's no hospital for you to go to. You're going to die. So we don't want our hospitals to close, folks. And the insurance companies are making off like bandits, taking home tens of billions of dollars in profits, while people, people's hospitals in their community are closing because they're not getting paid enough from the insurance companies. That's a huge problem. And um, I've been a, a big advocate of educating the public about the truth and uh, ultimately to, to save yourselves, you're gonna have to fight the insurance companies and the way you do that is with your state legislators, your politicians. They need to pass statewide laws that prevent insurance companies from denying paying for medical care. That's really what's destroyed the hospitals and doctor's offices and surgery centers is insurance companies have been given the power through legislation or laws at the state level that allow them to deny medical care that's not medically necessary. They call it not medically necessary. How many people out there have gotten a letter from their insurance company saying their doctor recommended something that's not medically necessary or experimental? Pretty much everybody now. Now rewind the clock 20 years ago, did you ever have those letters? No. So the insurance companies have abused the law, they've taken advantage of it and they're using it to their financial advantage, but to you, your detriment by shutting down all your hospitals. So good luck with that. I'll head over and answer some questions, okay? So go ahead and type up your questions. I'll be there in a few minutes and I'll answer them for you. 
And then we'll have a special surprise. We'll get to see these patients go home today and they'll tell us how they feel. Again, I'm Dr. Duke Majin with Duke Spine Institute. I'll be right there to answer your questions. So type them up, please. All right, everyone, thank you for joining us for the post-op Q&A. We have Dr. Duke in the room with us here. We're going to switch over to his face cam shortly so he can talk to you a little bit about the surgery you just watched. If you have any remaining questions about what you just saw, go ahead and type them in the chat now, and we'll display them on the screen. Otherwise, I'm going to hand the mic over to Dr. Duke now. Thank you. All right, thanks, Sean. So at first I was disappointed that nobody's asking questions, and I realized I must be doing a pretty good job of teaching because you guys know everything. <laughs> All right, so our patient today is having surgery for back pain. And he's had back pain, I think, for his whole life, which is, he's about my age, so he's 50. And um, I think he's had back pain for at least 20 or 30 years. We'll talk to him in recovery. That said, he's had the same back pain in his lower back in the belt area, and he's had it his whole life, but he's not ever had anyone fix it for him and he just believed there was no way to fix it like many people out there so he just lived with the back pain now the pain wasn't so bad that he couldn't get out of a chair and had to live in a wheelchair mm -hmm. but the back pain was bad enough mm -hmm. did you lose me yeah, I just, I just the back pain was bad enough that it really interfered significantly with his activities of daily living and it kept him from doing things that he enjoyed doing. And of course, for anyone who lives with chronic back pain, you understand what I'm talking about. Chronic back pain can rob you of the quality of your life. Because we all know that people with chronic back pain, when they do too much, they end up paying for it. And then they're down for a day or two, just trying to ease the pain off by being inactive. Well, folks, that is absolutely no way to live your life. And that's the way it's been for the last couple of thousand years. However, Duke Spine Institute has now found the source of back pain in virtually 95% of patients out there with chronic back pain. And we've also found the best way to treat it. And you just watch the best way to treat it. It's the Duke Laser Disc Repair. Transforaminal, seven millimeter incision, basically bloodless surgery done outside the hospital in a surgery center. Safe, effective, go home an hour after your surgery. Literally back to a normal life the next day. Minor restrictions, yes, no doubt about it. 
Just because you're feeling great and you don't have the pain doesn't mean that disc is healed. So our patients do very well. We've done over 1,200 of these surgeries in the last 15 years here at Duke Spine Institute. If you're wondering whether or not your pain can be treated and cured the same way with this minimally invasive procedure, just submit your MRI to Duke Spine Institute. Let us look over the MRI and we'll let you know. We do a free MRI review, free MRI analysis, no cost to you. Literally, all you got to do is pop the MRI in, upload the images, tell us a little bit about your pain and symptoms, and then we'll actually even do a video conference with you for free. That's how this patient came here. We did a video conference with him and his wife in Canada and answered all their questions, showed them the herniation, and here they are getting the surgery done. That's the way it's supposed to happen, folks. Quick, efficient, safe. He should be able to go home probably tomorrow back to Canada and then take care of his children, his wife, and his farm and get back to doing the things without back pain. That's what I expect from him and for anybody we treat. All right, well, if you d haven't uh, downloaded the Duke Spine app, I recommend you check it out. The Duke Spine Institute app is free. It's got great information, great resources, lots of videos and testimonials and uh, educational pieces on treating back and neck pain. So Duke Spine Institute app, free on Apple and free on Android. You can download it to your phone. Um, also, if you haven't been in our face group, Facebook support group, it's called the Spine Surgery Support Group. You don't have to have spine surgery to go there and be a member. It's really just a place to ask questions and get answers. And everything is answered honestly and factually. I've been in a lot of Facebook support groups for spine, and I can't even believe how much misinformation there is out there. It's funny because people complain about a herniated disc and back pain and I say, we can fix that, there's a cure, and they literally <laughs> drive me out like a bunch of trolls that they are. It's pretty funny, they, do, they don't want people to know the truth, it's scary. So if you wanna know the truth, keep tuning in to these broadcasts. I'm happy to answer any and all of your questions. You may not like the answer you get, but I can't be responsible for that. I just give you the truth. Any more questions? We have oh, we do, one popped up, so Sean's gonna read it to us. We have a viewer named Sarah from YouTube wondering, how long is the full recovery time for DLDR? Sarah, great question. How long is the full recovery time for Duke Laser Disc Repair? Well, I'll be honest with you. I don't know how to answer your question. I don't know if you mean by full recovery, like the time till the disc is solid and can't be injured anymore. If that's the case, it's one year, 12 months. At the end of 12 months, that disc that I repaired will be perfectly healed, no pain, and it's very hard to re-injure it. Um, if you mean recovery time is in, when can the patient go back to work? Tomorrow, quite literally tomorrow. We even had a patient have this laser surgery. There was a coach of a men's championship basketball team, and he went and coached the game that night after the surgery in Orlando. So. Um, you can literally go back to work the same day, but I don't recommend that. I say the next day. And of course, you'll have some lifting and bending restrictions. Thanks for the question, and I've enjoyed our time together. Any more questions, Sean? Well, we'll see you all next week, and I think we're going to do a, a podcast soon with um, our new head of marketing. And uh, I don't know what the topic will be, but he's, he wants me to talk on subject, and I'll be happy to do that and then we'll put it out there for everyone to watch. If you have any topics you want me to talk about on a podcast, just send them in to our Duke Spine website by email or contact form and I'll be happy to do them.